Hi everyone, how are you doing? Is all right? Welcome to Newcastle Fans TV. So last night we've seen us, well, see me talking about uh, the opposition, and tonight we're going to be talking about Newcastle, how we're going to set up. And as you can probably tell, I am joined by a guest. Uh, I'm joined by Foley. How are you doing, Foley? I'm good, mate. It seems like I haven't seen you in ages, I'm not? <laughs> yeah, it's only been a, a couple of days since we quiz. It went down really well, actually. That quiz. I was, I was quite impressed with it. It took a while, but you know, very impressive, and it's good to kind of get the knowledge out there. And you're only just beating by one, just by one. Still one point though. <laughs> right, okay. So we're going to be talking about the tune. So obviously let's follow on from last time when we beat Man United, an absolutely mint win. How do you see us going into this game? How are we going to approach it? Going into the ball, it's a totally different game. We're playing away and they're only three points ahead of us as well. Um, I think we should go into it similar how we did to the Man United game. You know, we went all guns blazing in the first half. Um, you know, go all out attack. And I think we probably might pretty much keep the same team. I can't see us making too many changes unless there's a last-minute injury or anything like that. Obviously, Dubravka had a fantastic debut. Shelby and Diami boss in the field. And Gail was just running after everything up front. So I don't think there should be any changes made as of yet. So you would literally go for the same line, despite the fact that Slimani's back? Yeah, I know I know Slimani's back, but it's going to be his first game. And, you know, a crucial game is going to be as well against Bournemouth. Let's make no mistake about it. But I think we'll see Slimani come on in the second half. But again... In terms of work rate, Gale was just as important as Shelby's performance or the Arnold's performance or the Bravka's performance because he chased everything down, put him under pressure, led from the front. And um, I don't think Slimani should go straight into the, to the game straight away because, you know, he's not played for a couple of weeks now. So I don't think it's fair on Gale either. I was looking at Bournemouth yesterday <clears throat> and they play a very, very high line, which I was quite surprised about, about that. So if I had Slimani, we wouldn't be able to get in behind would we? So Gale would be probably the right call to do for this kind of job, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly right. Because, you know, looking at their centre-halves, they're, they're quite slow. They're not that as mobile and as quick as, you know, someone like Lascelles. Um So I, I would imagine someone like Gale could stretch them, and, you know, first 60, 70 minutes stretch them, you know, get them running all over the place and tie them out. And then maybe Slimani might we might have to change our approach, you know, we might have to go a different dimension because we might even go like 1-0 or 2-0 down. So we might have to go do a different approach. But one thing I must say is that if we're playing someone like Gal, please don't lump it up to him because I know those centre halves will just, you know, eat up all those long balls for days. And we've done, we've done that before against big opposition, and it just doesn't work. You mean I know because Florian June does that, and Kieran Clark does that when he's in the side as well, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Now, Bournemouth are likely to play a four-four-one-one. Obviously, they're, they're formed very hit and miss. I mean, they're going to be Arsenal, they go away at Chelsea, but then they get smashed off Wigan, and then they get smashed off Huddersfield. It's one of those sides you just don't know what you're going to get from this. How? How do we set up then? Do we do we sit? Do we counter? I know you said that you think it'll be the same side, but it'll be the same formation, same system. Or do you think because against Man United we tacked a little bit, do you think we'll sit further back this time? Um, I think we'll sit further back in periods. You know, we often love to soak it up, and I don't think we're we're built for that. But again, Rafa Benitez, the way he sets us up, you know, we're ultra defensive. As you can see by our goal difference right now, it's not that big a deal. So. You know, defensively, we're all right, but I still get that, you know, that unnervy feeling. You know what we're like <laughs> as team fans. We get that unnervy feeling when we're defending literally on our penalty area. But I re reckon we should just go for it from the get-go. Literally get out, get out. And what have we got to lose, really? Obviously, apart from three points. Well, we won them last year, last time, didn't it? Two, year, two seasons ago, 1-0 Perez. And yeah. Robelis, Robelis had an absolute worldie. And obviously, yeah. Eddie Howes talked about Mark Ritchie returning there, and he should get a good reception, which you would think. So, Bournemouth, obviously, just three points above us. Now, I was saying in the video last night that, you know, the winning against Man United, there's no point winning Man United to go to Bournemouth and get beat. You've got to then kick this on. So, is it more important that Newcastle don't lose this game rather than winning it? You're exactly right there. Because all of that, you know, hype around the Man United win will just be undone if we go and lose against Bournemouth, who is at our moment is a rival of ours. You know, in fact, everyone below us is obviously a rival, but at the moment we've got a chance to put some real distance between us and the rest of the pack, and that's what we want to do. So again, we need to take advantage of these these opportunities here because obviously we've still got big games coming up. We've still got, you know, the likes of Arsenal. We've still got the likes of Chelsea, Tottenham. So again, these sort of games are the games that we need to at least get a point or, as you said, not get beaten. Would you take a point if I offered it to you right now? 100%. 100%. Obviously, you know, we're three points behind them. We can go ahead of them at the moment. But at the same time, it's Bournemouth. They're no slouch. They've been in the Premier League for a while now. 
got a really decent amount of players in there, especially that guy up front, which I'm sure we'll get onto Jermaine Defoe. And again, if we could take a point, you know, not concede too many as well and keep that goal difference down, I'll take, I'd snatch your hand up. Yeah, I think I would as well, to be honest. So just keep that run. I think something like one defeat in seven in the league at the minute. So yeah. we're slowly, it seems to be we're pulling away <laughs> a little bit, but that league table is so tight. You touch upon Bournemouth as well. Let's quickly talk about them. I know we're talking about Newcastle mostly, but you've obviously mentioned one striker there, Jermaine Defoe. He's actually only got three goals all season, which surprised me. Um, when I look at that as well, and Joshua King's got three, but Callum Wilson's got seven. Are they the only three you'd look at, or, the, or anyone out wide in particular, or night perhaps? I'll definitely say uh, Jermaine Defoe, obviously, because, you know, obviously the whole Sunderland connection as well. And, you know, any time a Sunderland player <laughs> or ex Sunderland player goes against us, you know what's going to happen. So, again, we definitely need to be wary of him. We've already seen what he can do firsthand in a Sunderland shirt, let alone in a Portland shirt. But, yeah, as you said, the other front two, Callum Wilson and Joshua King, they're on decent form as well. But I like the like, like the looks of uh, Nathan Ake. He's been okay. Yeah, the back. Well. Yeah, I like the look of him as well. He's... he's um, I'm surprised Chelsea let him go, to be honest with you, but obviously they've got a good fee for him. But I like the look of him as well. And obviously their centre-halves, again, if we play to their strengths, you know, i.e. literally lumping up to them, and probably going to play the likes of Ayuzi Perez and Dwight Gale, who are pretty much like five for nothing. We're not going to win those balls. So again, we just need to play to our strengths, play play smart, you know, so, use, use the whip as well. Because again, we've got the likes of Yedlin and Dummett. Um, to, to, to which try. So would you play the football on the ground and hit it on the counter fast? Totally, fast? totally. Because none of those centre halves, maybe Ake is, is catching up with Gail, and that's what that's what we need to do. Because at the moment, Gail's not looking like anything. As much as I praised him in the last game, you know he's not scored in a while. Um, but we need to be playing to his strengths because otherwise, you know, it's it's pretty much pointless having him up top. You now, if we're going to play long balls, that's when Slimani comes into play. But again, I don't see us playing that game unless, A, we've got the mindset to do it, or B, you know, it's coming into the later um, parts of the, part of the game. I would say, wear them out, first 60, 70 minutes, try and keep it nil-nil, and then maybe in the last 20 or so minutes, get Slimani, get Slimani on, and let him make a real impact, because so far, both of our loan signers have made a real impact, and I'm sure Slimani will want to do the same as well. Yeah, and I just want to talk about relationships at the back because we've seen Martin, Martin Dubrovka come in and me and you were WhatsApp and each other and you were going, he's going to be number one. And I was saying, no, he's not. He's going to, going to be covered for Freddie Woodman. And then we're seeing it. He didn't play the first game and then he's coming against Man United really impressed. And then when I've seen his communication needs to continue, but also if you look in front of him, Jamal Asseld will organise your, your, whoever's in front, who's inside and whatever. But Florian Lejeune needs to now cement that side and try and stay away from injuries and have that communication with Lascelles and behind him, the goalkeeper, because the rest of the season, you know, we haven't really been conceded many and Lejeune and Dubrovka haven't been in that side. So it's important. Do you feel that that relationship continues to grow? 100%. I mean, I remember remember going back now to maybe last season in the Championship when Rafa Benitez was talking about relationships and, and the spine of the team. He always wanted to get the spine right. He always wanted to get Lascelles alongside a partner. And for the longest time, obviously, I had Kieran Clark. At this level, I think he's just not as quick as, as other players and obviously sometimes get caught out and obviously sometimes the cells is mopping up. But with Lejeune, I think he's got someone who can match him and also can play out from the back as well. And then obviously it's important that he's got someone behind him who can do the same as well. If, I was, if he was watching Deprived Girl like I was, he was you know playing balls out, just simple balls that Darlow or Elliot wasn't doing because... I've watched Darlow numerous amount of times and you know much, how much fan <laughs> I have been. But sometimes he just hoofs it long and I can see people frustrated at him. I can see Shelby shouting at him saying, you know, we don't need to keep lumping it long and putting the pressure back on us. But it's nice to see Dubrav go, you know, cool, under pressure, you know, maybe playing a, a nice smooth ball out to dumb it or, you know, actually playing a, a thoughtful ball out to Richie on the wing and helping us get up the pitch. So I think that... That unit there, if we can build on it, you know, have Lascelles alongside Lejeune, build that partnership and have Dubravka behind him as a solid partnership. And obviously shelving the army in the field in front of those lot as well. I think we're, we're onto a winner there as long as we keep those lot fit. Yeah, I think it's important Shelby gets on the ball more and gets it Kennedy on the ball too. Um, obviously, I've got you on. I need a prediction off you now. Then you've got to look either brave or stupid. Oh, dear. Well, as we said before, we take a, take a draw. So I'm going to go with a one-all draw. Well, I'm, I'm sneakily hoping for a Newcastle United win, but yeah. one or draw is, is a smart decision, I think. I think it'll be 1-1 one, one or 2-2. Two, two. I think we'll be gold in this one as well. Are you going to upload anytime soon? 
Uh, ask it this, ask it this every time, <laughs> don't I? Uh, well, as I said, I, I felt inspired after the United game. You know, it was, what, what a win! You know, I shouted down the house literally after we won. So, if we get a, a big win against Bournemouth, then you might see another cheek. You might see another video. Ford, yeah. have, Ford have mercy is uh, I'll put a link in the description as well. Cool. Well, Ford, thank you very much for coming on, man. No worries, always a pleasure, man. Thank you very much. Then, thanks for watching, Newcastle fans. See, let us know what you think in the comments down there below. See you. Bye bye.